नमस्ते एंड गुड इवनिंग विल स्टार्ट विद द प्लेयर्स ओम गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुर् देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम सहना सहन भुन सह वीर कर्वा वह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मिद्विषा वह ओ शांति 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 नॉवेल चेंट महामृत्युंजय मंत्र थ्री टाइम्स to pray for those who are in difficulty and suffering particularly during this pandemic om trayambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam urvarukam eva bandhana mrutyor mukshiya mamruta om trayambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam उर्वाकम इव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओं त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाक इव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओ शांति 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 welcome everyone will today's class 6 in class 5 we had covered these topics will continue from there sage yagyavalkya praises sage bharadwaj so in class 5 if you remember we have discuss the penance and meditation of parvati there were some sages seven sages who came there to test love and commitment and devotion of parvati towards lord shiva lord shiva then burns down kamadeva the god of love and passion because kamadeva tries to disturb him and he agrees to marry parvati and finally the marriage with parvati happens and their child shanmukha he is born and he kills tarakasura because that's the boon that demon one demon had sought that i should be killed only by son of lord shiva so from there we we'll continue sage yagyavalkya praises sage bharadwaja so we'll cover these topics today then parvati approaches lord shiva with her questions about lord rama shiva's answers to parvati the causes of birth of lord rama narada's delusion and we'll see if we can cover these many topics today one of the questions i have heard from you that we discussed in class 3 that story of shiva and sati sati's delusion so the the story was that first lord shiva conceives manas in his mind and then he goes to he, he then he tells some people and then he goes to yagya then he goes to sage sage agastya whom who recites the manas to him so the glory the transmission of divine story of lord rama we had discussed that it first it came to shiva and then from shiva to kak bhushundi from kak bhushundi to 
सेज यागिया वल्किया एंड देन यागिया वल्किया स्टेरिंग भरत द्वाजा एंड देन सम अदर सेंट्स आल्सो एंड तुलसीदास जी गोट इट इन इन दिस मैन द क्वेश्चन वाज दैट ओके सेज लॉर्ड शिवा देन गोस टू अगस्त्या एंड ही लाइक्स टू हियर द स्टोरी ऑफ रामा सो ही हर्ड द स्टोरी ऑफ रामा but that basically means that rama must have happened long time ago because not only lord shiva saw the play of lord rama he conceived this story of lord rama he told all these people and then it transmitted through various generations various people to different saints and sages and your lord shiva wants to hear the story again so he hears it from agastya but then when shiva is returning with his wife sati how can come sati can see again lord rama in the forest and get deluded so that is, that has been essentially the question so i hope the the answer to this question is in manas itself the story of manas itself gives the answer to this question and in today's class i am hoping to cover those topics where when we discuss the causes of birth of lord rama that will be covered so in the last time and also there was one question earlier that this is the story of lord rama but so far we have covered more like story of lord shiva so how come we are discussing story of lord shiva and not lord rama to start in the starting itself so some of the answers of that question are here so here says yangya valkya telling the story of manas to sage bharadwaj sambhu charite sunni saras suhava bharadwaj muni ati sukha pava bahulalasa katha parbali nenan niruru ma balithadi प्रेम बिबस मुख आवन वाणी दशा देखे हर शे मुनि ज्ञानी अहो धन्य तव जन्म मुनि सा तुम हि प्राण सम प्रिय गौरी सा शिव प्रद कमल जिन रत नाही राम हि ते सपुने हुन सुहाई बिनु छल विश्वनाथ पद ने राम भगत कर लक्षण एहू सो हियर सेज याज्ञ वल्कि वेन ई टेल्स द स्टोरी ऑफ लॉर्ड शिवा टू भरद्वाज भरद्वाज मुनि द सेज भरद्वाज इज एक्सट्रीमली हैप्पी हिज हेयर स्टैंड ऑन एंड द टीयर्स फ्लोइंग फ्रॉम हिज आईज एंड आउट ऑफ सो मच लव ही इज नॉट एबल टू स्पीक when he sees this condition of sage bharadwaja sage yangi balke is very happy and he says oh you are so blessed that you love lord shiva like your own life and here sage yangi balke says that i want to tell you one thing those who do not love lord shiva lord rama also does not like them and this thing is coming it may be difficult for the audience in the west to understand the connection between this but in india even today to a certain extent but earlier people were very many people not all but many people were very segregated and divided into whom they worship to the extent that they would almost start hating the other deity so if somebody is devotee of lord shiva he may not even go to the temple of lord rama let alone worship lord rama and vice versa so here tulsidas ji is saying that if somebody has this kind of thing that i don't care for lord shiva but i am worshiping lord rama lord rama does not care for them either those people they are not truly the devotees of lord rama so he is even saying that those who love not shiva's lotus feet cannot even dream of pleasing ram and therefore he is saying that 
I wanted to test this quality of yours. Therefore, I told the story of Lord Shiva to see whether you like that or not. It, it, will, it will show your attitude towards Lord Shiva, even though you asked me to listen to the story of Lord Rama. But I purposely first told you the story of Lord Shiva so that I can understand whether you are worthy of listening to the story of Lord Rama. So here is it. Prathamahi mein kahi siva charit bujha maram tumhaar suchi sevak tum ram ke rahit samast vikaar मैं जाना तुम्हार गुण सीला कहूं सुनहू अब रघुपति लीला सुन मुनि आज समागम तोरे कहि न जाए जस सुख मन मोरे सो हियर से यागेवल का इज सेइंग दैट लुकिंग एट यू आई कैन नॉट डिस्क्राइब माय ओन हैप्पीनेस आई एम सो फॉर्चूनेट दैट आई हैव गॉटन अ पर्सन लाइक यू एज द लिसनर ऑफ द स्टोरी ऑफ लॉर्ड रामा हु हैज equal devotion to lord shiva also so he says now i have i know that you love lord shiva so now i start telling you the story of lord ram so the story is still continues but then it of course slowly slowly develops into the story of lord ram so now if you remember from last time we discussed that lord shiva marries parvati and parvati now once lord shiva is sitting in a very happy posture when parvati knows that lord shiva is quite pleased she approaches him she wants to clarify her doubts has some questions about lord ram बैठे सोह काम रिप कैसे धरे शरीर शांत रस जैसे पार्वती भल अब सर जानी गई शंभ पही मातु भवानी जान प्रिया आदर अति की न वाम भाग आसन हर दीना बैठी शिव समीप हर शाई पूर्व जन्म कथा चित आई so when parvati approaches lord shiva lord shiva receives her with a lot of love and respect and in india there is a tradition that wife sits left of her husband on the left side of her husband so lord shiva gives a seat to parvati in his left side she is very pleased she is very happy also seeing the love and respect of lord shiva towards her and she sits there in her seat and when she sits there she remembers the whole story of her past life as sati she was wife of lord shiva and then lord shiva had decided that he would have no longer wife like relationship with her and then she gave up her life in the fire ceremony of her father so she remembered all this that she was deluded to see lord rama had the questions did not get convinced by the replies of lord shiva and she had to go through all this suffering in tulsidas ramayana there are many scholars in india and the devotees of lord rama who who can tell you just one verse and like one hour talk or even more so i just want to point out here it says bama bhaga bama bhaga means the left side but when sati approaches lord shiva in the previous story we have discussed their lord gives her the seat in in his front rather than on his side because he would not consider sati as his wife so there are certain words so like people consider every word in this scripture has its own significance
ज्योमो पर प्रसन्न सुख राशि जानिय सत्य मोहिनी जदासी तो प्रभु हर हु मोर अज्ञाना कहि रघुनाथ तथा विधि नाना जासु भवन सुर तर तर होई सही कि दरिद्र जनित सुख सोई शशि भूषण अस हृदय बिचारी हर हुनाथ मम मति भ्रम भारी प्रभु जे मुनि पर मारथ बादी कहि राम कहु ब्रह्म अनादि शेष सारदा वेद पुराना सकल करहि रघुपति गुण गाना तुम पुनि राम राम दिन राति सादर जप हुआ राति राम सो अवधन पति सुत सोई की अज अगुन अलख गति कोई जौन पुत नैत ब्रह्म किम नारी बिरहमति भोर देख चरित महिमा सुनत भ्रमति बुद्धि अति मोर सो पार्वती वेन शी रिमेम्बर्स हर लास्ट लाइफ शी ऑल्सो रिमेम्बर दीज क्वेश्चन दीज डाउट शी हैड अबाउट लॉर्ड राम एंड इवन दो शी वॉज इन मच बेटर स्टेट ऑफ माइंड नाउ having taken a new birth gone through all the penance but she still had some questions and she wanted to clarify this time for good and she had a lot of devotion towards the words of lord shiva and also to to lord ram so she says that oh lord if you are pleased with me then please remove my ignorance regarding lord ram what kind of ignorance i i have so she says that the sages who discourse on the supreme reality speak of rama as the brahman who has no beginning and no end and the story of rama the glory of rama is sung by all the scriptures as well as saints and sages and different deities as well even you she is telling lord shiva that even you are chanting the name of lord rama day and night so this rama who who is this rama is it the son of ayodhya a son of king of ayodhya he is, is he a prince of ayodhya or is it something is it someone who who is beyond any quality quality qualifications one who is formless brahman who who is this brahman and if he is a prince then how can he be limitless brahman because a prince would naturally have some limits in terms of physic physical mental character every every single way human being however great he or she may be would have some limits so how can if if he is a prince how can he be all pervading formless without beginning without end what we talk of brahman so how is it possible and if he, if he is brahman who is omnipotent omnipresent omniscient then how can he feel deluded when his wife is abducted so these things i am not able to reconcile and i get more and more confused so please help me in this regard and then she further requests gudau tatva na sadhu duravahi arat adhikari jah paavahi ati arati puchau sururaya lagupati katha kahu karidaya pratham sukaran kahu vichari निर्गुण ब्रह्म सगुण बपुधारी पुनि प्रभु कहु राम अवतारा बाल चरित पुनि कहु उदारा और राम रहस्य अनेका कहु नाथ अति विमल विवेका जो प्रभु में पूछा नहीं होई सो दयाल राखु जन गोई सो शी से requesting lord shiva that even if it is something which is very mystical in nature and very sacred and secret knowledge 
even th those kind of things, a sadhu, a holy person, does not hide when he or she finds a worthy candidate. Either the candidate is worthy or candidate really wants to know. He, he's he or she is really suffering on account of no not knowing. So when they find such kind of person, then they reveal even those secrets which are not to be revealed to an ordinary person. So I am in that state. I am really having the agony. I do not know. So from that point of view of agony, I am qualified to hear the secret of Lord Rama. So please tell me the story in detail of Lord Rama. So first you tell me what is the cause for which the all-pervading, formless, unqualified divinity takes a body which is limited, time-bound and other limitations. So why, why does he need to do so? Then you tell me specifically about the incarnation of Lord Rama. Tell me his play as a child. Tell me his about his marriage. Tell me about his going to the forest. Tell me about his wife being abducted, how he consolidated an army of monkey chieftains, how he killed Ravana, how he got Mother Sita back, then his coronation Ayodhya. So tell me all these things things of Lord Rama in detail. And if there are any other things which I may have not asked explicitly to you, please do not hide those also. Please tell them also in detail. So that's the request of Parvati to Lord Shiva. Prasna uma ke sahaj suhai chal bihin suni sivman bhai har hiya ram charit sab aai प्रेम पुलक लोचन जल छाए श्री रघुनाथ रूप उर आवा परमानंद अमित सुख पावा सो लॉर्ड शिवा वाज वेरी हैप्पी टू हियर दिस क्वेश्चंस ऑफ पार्वती बिकॉज़ शी वाज कंप्लीटली गाइडलेस एंड शी वाज आस्किंग विद अ लॉट ऑफ सिंसियरिटी एंड डिवोशन एंड व्हेनेवर इट इज सेड दैट a guru also finds a disciple who is very sincere without and guileless guru is extremely pleased and ready to give whatever knowledge he has to the disciple so in this case lord shiva is like guru to parvati parvati is asking the questions lord shiva is answering and when he is then he gets in his mind to tell all the story of lord rama to parvati so first he gets all the story in his mind when he thinks of the story of lord rama he feels extremely happy his there are tears in his eyes he sees the form of lord rama and he becomes extremely joyful and blissful then he says सगुन ही अगुन ही नहीं कछु भेदा गाव ही मुनि पुराण बुध भेदा अगुन अरूप अलख अज जोई भगत प्रेम बस सगुन सो सोई जो गुन रहित सगुन सोई कैसे जलु हिम उपल बिलग नहीं जैसे जासु नाम भ्रमति मेर पतंगा तेहि किमि कही अभि मोह प्रसंगा so he is saying that there is no difference between the qualified divinity and unqualified brahman in other words there is no difference between form and formless divinity whether we call in the by the name of brahman which is formless and without any special qualities or we talk of divinity in the form like lord rama having the qualities essentially there is no difference 
that's how all the sages, all the scriptures, they have sung their glories. The one who is formless and not the subject of perce perceiving by the sense organs and one who is birthless, it is under the influence of devotees' love, he assumes a form. And he is giving here a comparison, a simile. So how can somebody who is beyond any qualities, how can he assume certain qualities and certain limitations? So he's saying just like the water and the hailstone, or you can say a piece of ice, there is no difference, water flowing. So water in a way can be considered as formless, like in the ocean, for example. And when you take a piece of ice, it has a form and it has some limits. But essentially, they both are water. So there is no difference between this. And many sages and saints have given different kind of similes to drive home this point that there's no difference between form and formless because it's the essential divinity is the same. And then he's saying that just by chanting the name of one, a devotee, a person is beyond, is goes beyond the darkness and delusion how can he himself be deluded? Is it ever possible like you are asking, he is saying to Parvati that how come Rama, if he is Brahman, gets deluded when his wife is abducted? Then he is saying, Nij Brahma nahi samujhahi agyani Prabhu parmoha dharahi jadu prani Jatha gagan dhan patal nihari so what happens is that you are perceiving the delusion in Lord Rama, but essentially it is your own delusion. The people who are not, who are not the men of knowledge, but they are under the ignorance, their own delusion, they project onto the Lord. Just like if there are clouds in the sky, they say that sun is covered by the cloud. Essentially, cloud only covers my sight. It does not cover the sun, cannot cover the sun. But it still we normally say that sun is covered by cloud. We don't say my sight is covered by the cloud. So similarly, my own ignorance I project onto the Lord. And then he is saying that without this ignorance, without this ignorance being removed, there is no way to attain happiness. So he is saying, Ehi bidhi jag hare ashrit rahai, jadapi asatya deta dukha ahai, jyon sapne sir kaate koi, binu jage na duri dukha hoi, ja sukrupa as bhram miti jai, giri ja soi krupal raghurai, adi ant ko ja suna pava, mati anumani nigam as gava, So, in this manner, this whole world is sustained by the Lord Himself. Even though it has no separate existence of its own, its existence is derived by the existence of Lord Himself. So, in that sense, it is unreal. It does not exist. Even though it's unreal, it is a cause of lot of pain and sorrow. It is like in the dream, if somebody is 
feeling a lot of misery, having a nightmare, even though it's not real, but it's causing a lot of pain. And even in the dream, if somebody tries to have some logic or reasoning, it does not go away. The pain and sorrow does not go away until unless one wakes up. So he is saying, O oh, Parvati, one by whose grace this ignorance goes away. The same person is Lord Rama. The Lord who is without beginning and without end, nobody knows what he is. People sing his glories as per their own understanding, even the scriptures. He is the same Lord Rama, the son of Dasharatha, the prince of Ayodhya. Jehi imi gava hi beda budhu jahi dhara himoni dhyan soida sirath sut bhagat hit kosal pati bhagavan. So the Lord, whose glories are sung by the scriptures, by the saints and sages, one who, on whom sages meditate upon, the same, same entity has taken the form of the prince of Ayodhya, the son of Dasharatha, the king of Ayodhya, for the sake of his devotees. Then, Parvati, once she hears these words of Lord Shiva, her ignorance is gone. She doesn't have any doubt about divinity of Lord Rama or whether the Rama, one who is the prince of Ayodhya, is different from absolute, unqualified divinity, formless divinity. So she is saying, Sasikar sam suni gira tumhari, mita moha sarda tapubhari, tum krupal sabu sansau hareu, Rama swarup jani mohi pareu, Rama Brahma Chin Me Abhinasi Sarva Rahit Sab Urpur Basi Nath Dharev Nar Tan Kahu Hetu Mohi Sam Jhai Kahu Brush Ketu So Parvati is very pleased. She is very joyful because her doubts are gone. Her delusion is gone regarding the real nature of Lord Rama. So she is saying that your words are as refreshing as the moonbeams and my ignorance has faded away. You have removed all my doubts. Now I truly understand the reality of Rama. Rama, she says that I understand now that he is no other than all-pervading formless Brahman, who is Satchidananda. He is not dependent upon anybody. He is beyond everything and yet he dwells in the hearts of everybody. So now I want to listen to the story of Lord Rama that why he took this particular form of Lord Rama. So please tell me the reason for him taking the form of Lord Ram. So there Lord Shiva tells, tells Parvati, causes of birth of Lord Ram. Harigun naam apa katha roop agnit amit manaj mat anusar kahau uma sadar sunahu Hari avatar he tujehi hoi, idamitham kahi jai na soi, Ram atat ya buddhiman bani, matahamar asusanai sayani, Tadapisanta muni beda purana, Jessica chukahai swamati anumana, Tasume sumukisunava tohi, Samoji parai jessicaran mohi, Jabjabhoi dharam kehani, 
बाणही असुर अधम अभिमानी करही अनीति जाय नहीं भरनी सीधही विप्र धेनु दुसुर धरनी तब तब प्रभु धरि विविध शरीरा हरही कृपा निधि सज्जन पीरा असुर मारि था पहि सुरन राखहि निज श्रुति से जग विस्तार ही विसद जस राम जन्म कर हेत सो हियर इज सेइंग दैट व्हाई द फॉर्मलेस बियॉन्ड क्वालिटी एब्सोल्यूट गॉड टेक्स अ फॉर्म व्हिच इज लिमिटेड सो फर्स्ट ही इज सेइंग दैट हरि गुण नाम अपार द वर्चूज द नेम्स एंड द स्टोरीज एंड द फॉर्म्स ऑफ लॉर्ड आर ऑल अनलिमिटेड innumerable and immeasurable so just like he is saying that lord is limitless in his formless entity and the beyond qualities even when he takes the form and has the qualities and plays the acts all those put together they are still unlimited and innumerable so in that case how can tell exactly that what is the cause but i'll tell you as i understand lord shiva tells parvati so why the lord takes a birth as a human being or as any other form you cannot say that that's it like it's very difficult to say that that's the reason and nothing else so because lord rama is beyond the intellect mind speech i'll only tell as per my own understanding i can cannot say that that's it whatever i'm saying that's it and nothing more nothing else because it's a limitless so that cannot be said so he is giving one reason that whenever there is decrease of righteousness and all the demons the people who do not follow dharma they they increase and they they, they are doing a, giving a lot of pain to the people and everybody is feeling very disturbed on that account those are the times when lord takes a different bodies and he takes away the pain of the people who are trying to follow dharma so in that in that manner he defeats the demonic elements and make sure that the dharma which is proclaimed by the scriptures as well as it is the basis of the whole universe that indeed is retained in good stead and when he does that the acts which he plays they become the source of joy for the devotees of the lord and many people they sing the glories they sing the names of the lord and then they attain the liberation so that is the main reason for taking the birth of lord ram it is the similar thing which is mentioned in bhagavad gita that lord krishna tells arjuna yada yada hi dharmasya glane bhavati bharata so whenever there is loss of virtues loss of the path of dharma i take birth and set the things right and he is saying this particular birth of lord rama like in this form with these stories they are many and all of them are so wonderful like you hear one story and then you hear the other and other one is more wonderful than the previous one like that so i'll tell you a few reasons for specifically for lord taking the form of lord ram so here it is ram janam ke hetu aneka param vichitra ek te eka 
जन्म एक दुई कहो बखानी सावधान सुन सुमत भवानी द्वार पाल हरि के प्रिय दो जय अरु विजय जान सब को विप्रश्रापते दो नौ भाई तामस असुर दे हति न पाई भय निशाचर जाय ते महावीर बलवान कुंभकरण रावण सुभट सुर विजय जग जान so he is telling the first story first story of by lord rama took birth so there were two devotees of lord rama their names are jay and vijay so jay and vijay their names these two people were so devoted to lord that they went to vaikuntha the place of the lord after their death and it is said in the scriptures of devotion that those who are very close devotees of lord they attain the form of the lord so they look like lord himself and they are their main purpose is just to serve the lord in heaven because in sanskrit it is called vaikuntha it is similar to what you can say heaven even though in concept of heaven is different in indian scriptures but the heaven as probably used in bible in that sense vaikuntha can be compared to that and that is a place of extreme bliss because devotees minds are primarily on the lord they are serving him they are feeling joy and in different capacities different people are there different devotees are there so they are all very joyful and that's how the time is passing there now these two people jay and vijay once they were working as gatekeepers in the heaven in vaikuntha so once four sages came there to see lord to meet lord and those four sages they are considered the first born on the whole earth they are considered the first born sanat sanat suja sanakadi we call it them sanakadi so sanak sanatan sanandan and sanat kumara if you can don't know their names don't worry about it but the beauty of these sages is that they all have assumed the form of a 5 year old child and they live without any clothes because for a 5 year child 5 year old there is no concept of shame or anything and all they do is they either help the devotees of the lord they tell the stories to of lord to each other and they, sometimes they go to see the lord himself and they have no restrictions anywhere like they can go anywhere in any place of existence they can go so when these two people jay and vijay saw these four sages coming in the form of children they did not recognize them or if they recognize them the story says that but they stop them they put their staff at the gate and says say that who are you you cannot just go like that. now these sages were revered by everybody and they had they they are uh, they could go anywhere without any obstruction so when they saw this obstruction they felt unhappy about it and they said they 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 told these two people that even though you have been here and you are serving the lord your mind is still not pure you can still not identify the things as they are and you are trying to stop us because your mind is not pure we curse you to go to earth become a demon and you have to then learn a few lessons there and then you can then you will learn the less then your mind will be, then then you will learn that how to identify correct 
when Jay and Vijay, they heard this curse, they were extremely sad that they have to go to earthly plane and that too as a demon instead of devotee of the Lord. When Lord heard this curse about about this curse from the sages to the, his own two devotees, he himself came out, out of the gate when he heard about this. And he himself bows down to sages and say, look, the mistake of my devotees is my mistake. I accept your curse. And those sages, when they realized what they had done, they were asking, they were asking the forgiveness of the Lord. And Lord says, you don't need, don't need to worry. They are my devotees, I'll take care of them. Your curse, because you are sages of such high stature, your words cannot go untrue. So it will happen. But when they are born as demon, I'll myself have to take the birth to kill them so that they get liberated. Because they will be so powerful that nobody else can face them. So I myself will go and myself, I'll have to kill them for their own liberation. So sages had given their curse that they had to be born three times on the earth as demons. So Lord was Lord had to take birth three times. And one of them was Lord Rama in the middle. So first it was Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu, those who know the story. Then Ravana and Kumbhakarana, these two people. And then Shishupala and Dantavakra in the time of Lord Krishna. So that is one of the reasons why Lord had to take birth. That is one of the reasons Lord Shiva is telling Parvati. And then Parvati is raising a doubt that how is it that when Lord has himself killed, they did not get liberated after the very first time. So Lord Shiva is saying that Mukutuna bhai hate bhagavana, tini janam duje vachana pravana, ek var tin ke hit lagi, dhareu sarir bhagat anuragi. So they did not get liberation, even though Lord Himself killed them. And there is a saying that one who sees Lord or remembers Lord or gets killed by Him at uh, uh, one who sees him at the time of death or just takes his name or gets killed by him, he surely attains the liberation. But they did not attain the liberation because Lord had accepted the curse of these sages that they will be born three times. So three times he had come and after three births, they were liberated and again went back to him. So he's saying that is one of the time, this is one of the reasons why Lord took birth. Then he is telling another story. So we probably don't have the time to complete this story, the delusion of Narada. So I'll cover this story next time. And uh, even this aspect which I wanted to cover today that why there are why the uh, the Rama was there when Shiva was returning. So I'll, I'll just tell briefly, but we will cover it in more detail next time. So in Indian scriptures, Hindu scriptures, there is a time period called Kalpa and that is 4.32 billion years. And that is considered a day of Brahma. So in every Kalpa, the Lord takes birth. So Lord Rama does not has not come just once, but he comes again and again in every Kalpa. So how this calculation happens and all these things, I'll explain to you. But the idea is that time is eternal. There is no beginning of time. There is no end of time. And in the cycle of these many years, once every these many years, Lord Ram, Lord assumes the form of Lord Rama and plays pretty much the similar kind of acts as in the previous one. So that's the reason. So, so we'll, we'll discuss those things later in more detail. And uh, I would just want to, 
I just want to get any questions or comments from you. So you can write in the chat box. So one of the question is, why are devatas, the divine beings, cursed to be born as demons? We see quite a few examples in Ramayana too. So you see, until one gets completely liberated, there is always a play of duality. So we have the divine qualities and we have the demonic qualities. Therefore, it is always possible to fall down. And Gurudev Baba Hariharananji, he always stressed that until unless one is established into Nirvikalpa Samadhi, it's always possible to fall down. So even if one attains supreme heights of meditation or otherwise, until unless it is the final step one has taken of realization, it is always possible to fall down. So these stories tell that point that even if somebody has very somebody has risen very high, it's still possible to fall down. And there are many such stories in different scriptures as well as with saints and sages that it can happen. So that's that's the reason uh, why they they can be cursed to born as demons. So any anybody else? Any questions or comments? If not, then we'll close the class. I just want to give you one information. We will not have Ramayana classes for next three times. So like 14th, 19th and 21st, we will not have. Our next class would be two weeks from now on 26th. So I'll send a reminder and you will see and also an email that we will not have the classes 14th, 19th. Basically, our next class would be Thursday, August 26th. So, and you will get also reminded. Then. So, with this, I'll close the section with the prayers. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashit Dukha Bhagbhave Om Puna Madaha Puna Midam Puna Puna Mudachyati Puna Sya Puna Madaya Puna Meva Vashishyati Om Shanti 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 Thank you all.